You're now watching the Mike Missinelli Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Mike Missinelli Podcast. It is a beautiful, hot day. It is June 13th on a Thursday. We're doing this podcast. Of course, the Mike Missinelli Podcast is brought to you by Bet Rivers. A little later in the show, we will give you uh, the odds on the U.S. Open and what might be a good bet. Uh, but for now, let's start with the main topic right here on the Mike Missinelli Podcast. And it is the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, I, I I will admit this for, that for the first time, the Phillies are so good they're boring. Yeah, they bore me. They 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 literally bore me. I, I, I it, they're so good. Like, and I don't mean this that I, I I'm criticizing the Phillies for being boring. I I'm saying this because that's what they are. They're 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 not as interesting anymore to me because they're so good. And uh, you know, we can, and, and here's an example of that. The Phillies play a, a series against the Boston Red Sox. They win the first game. They lose the second game. <laughs> People, like my, my producer Darren gives me the show sheet, and he says the the London trip finally caught up with them. Now, so let's let's handle this first of all right away with producer Darren. What? They lost a baseball game. The London trip caught up with them because they lost a baseball game? No, they were like goofy in the field. They were slow in the the field. Not making plays in the field. They were they looked tired to me. (laughs) (laughs) They look tired to you. Did you expect them to play perfect baseball in every game of a 162 baseball no, season? No, not at all. I, I'm not saying they should. I'm just saying they look tired to me that traveling over the weekend. They were they were juiced up, I think, last night. They were fine on energy-wise. But you figured that coming uh-huh. back, the jet lag was going to bother them at some point. It looked like last night and it hit think, them. And you think that's that's what it was last night? No, but not the, yeah, not was... because they lost the game, but because that they were kind of slow. Harper was missing uh, missed, missed a couple of balls in at first base. Uh, they just looked out of sorts. And Merrifield made a bad play. Now, yeah. I, I, I I get it, but that's these all. are things that will happen regularly during a baseball season. Yes, There's going to be games when you're not going to look good. That, I, it I doesn't don't mean they weren't jet lagged though. Uh, okay, well, I, I mean, I see that's that's an easy grasp <laughs> that they were they were tired because of their jet lag coming back from London, uh, and this is what I mean. They're so good when I look at this team. They're so good. A loss doesn't even phase me. I don't even I, I don't even look at games anymore critically when they lose a game. I go, they're just supposed to lose a the game. They're not gonna they're not gonna win every game. It it doesn't have any effect on me. And here's here's the reason why, because uh, let, let's look at this situation. Because the JT Romuto situation has now popped up, and he's going to be out for six weeks. They finally decided you get that little meniscus clip. It's not a major surgery, but you have to go through muscle. It takes a while to to recover from it. Now the the only reason, and, and let me just say this: I don't like Garrett Stubbs a little bit, and Raphael Marchand is not a prospect. Okay, but it doesn't even matter. This is what I'm telling you here. It doesn't even matter that you'll have to go six weeks with Garrett Stubbs and Raphael Marchand because of one reason, the pitching rotation. Now, they took JT Realmuto out of this equation right for the time being. They already have a lack of primo middle-of-the-order right-handed pop. And from that standpoint... It's not a pleasurable situation for the Phillies not to have JT Realmuto in the lineup because he's got pop. Now, he's been slumping. I get it. Maybe the knee's been bothering him. But conversely, and the counterbalance to that is that Turner will be back and Marsh will be back. So, like, you can't even look at that as a slip-up because two guys that have kind of been on the sidelines are now going to be back to fortify your lineup. And the starting pitching is consistent. Now, what does that mean as far as the Phillies go? It means they can't go on a sustained losing streak. When you have a rotation like that, you cannot possibly go on a five, six game losing streak. It's just not going to happen. And that's why, to me, the Phillies are boring. And it's just a matter of waiting for the rest of the season to see whether they can buck up in the playoffs better than they did last year. There, there's absolutely no worries. I, you know, I've, I've gotten into a position where 
I changed the channel last night. The Phillies were up 4 nothing in that game. I changed the channel. I came back. The Red Sox are up 6-4. And I go, yeah, maybe I'll lose this game. Who cares? <laughs> like, the, like, I've gotten to a point where a bad game from them doesn't even matter. JT Romito going out of the lineup in six weeks doesn't really matter because the name of the game has always been, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, pitching. And if you have a rotation that is headed up by Wheeler, Nola, Suarez, and even Christopher Sanchez, who I, I mean, went, went off a little bit, he's as solid a number five as there is maybe in the game. So you can't possibly go on a losing streak because your pitchers are always going to keep you in that you lose two games. The guy pitching the third game is is not going to allow you to lose three games. It's just that simple. And Mike, I even and said so, to you before the game yesterday, like that was that was a Red Sox line. They were only Phillies were only minus one twenty yeah, last night against Pavagita. And, and, uh, and our, my favorite pitcher, uh, I hate him like I hate Jokic. And it's Nick Pavetta. When we say we had to put up with the Nick Pavettas of the world and the Zach Eflins, not that they both didn't have you know decent arms. But they were so inconsistent. It used to make me crazy to the point where I I named I renamed Nick Pavetta as Pavagita. And and Pavagita was like he was the classic example of what he was as a Philly. Like erratic and he loses his way for a couple of innings. <laughs> so so still the Red Sox win that game last night. And it means absolutely zero to me. And JT Miramuto's injury means zero. People say, Well, you have to go out and get a catcher. Who in the hell are you going to get as a catcher that's going to be that much better than Garrett Stubbs, who stinks, by the way, or Raphael Morshan, who's no longer a prospect? Is there another catcher out there? You're going to take somebody's backup catcher in Major League Baseball. They're going to come in there and make that much of a difference? So you just got to sit on it. You just sit on it. And you say, the other two guys are coming back. Our lineup will be fine. As long as we have uh, uh, a pitching staff, we're going to be fine. Now, there's one question I have for Rob Thompson. Why is he incessant about getting Whit Merrifield at bats? We we may have seen Whit Merrifield that can't, really can't hit anymore, and and Rob Thompson keeps reset. He's got to get him in the lineup. He's got to play him here. He's got to play him. There. Well, he doesn't play any position particularly well, so it's maddening when he's in the lineup. And last night I was I was stunned. He caught he caught a ball across the middle of the field. And make kind of like a diagonal throw to get a guy at first base. And I, I, I dropped my iced tea. I, cu I couldn't believe that he would actually make that play. At one point, Whit Merrifield was probably a pretty good all-around player in this league that you could play anywhere. But at this point, you go, you know, maybe, we're, maybe we think too much of this guy. That we don't have to get him at bats every game. I mean, that's my one beef, if I have a beef about the Philadelphia Phillies. That this constant wedging Whit Merrifield into the lineup, whether it's playing second base, whether it's playing left field, or whether it's playing this or playing that. I don't know if that's that necessary. At this point, play guys that you can count on. I mean, you know, this this thing with uh, Stott, when he benches him against left-handers, what is he? Has he lost confidence this guy as a hitter? I mean, last year we are talking about Bryson Stott as a guy who could possibly win a batting title. Now all of a sudden he can't hit left-handers? And you have to wedge Merrifield in there. Like, I, I, these are little things that I don't understand. And like last night, when they had to use a guy like Ruiz in a middle inning, I'm not thinking to myself that, the, that Ruiz is going to give you two clean innings. He's a, he's a journeyman for a reason, because he can't give you two clean innings consistently. And then uh, and then we got the, the, the other problem with uh, the, the, the guy. I don't know where uh, they're going to put Spencer Turnbull because he, had, he didn't pitch for a really long time and he came in last night and was not sharp. And so I, I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they are better off putting uh, him in as the four starter and demoting Taiwan Walker. But they're paying Taiwan Walker a lot of money. Taiwan Walker really does a profile as a bullpen arm. So I think we're going we're gonna to milk this whole thing. The one thing Rob Thompson does not like is change. So he, to a fault, is going to count on the players that he has in the positions that he has them. He's not a guy that's going to tinker with the lineup, although he is trying to wedge uh, 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 Nick Castellanos uh, into the two-hole. Uh, like, you know, I, listen, I, I understand why he's trying to do this, to try to awaken this guy. Uh, but it was interesting, I was watching him last night, the last night's game, 
and he got a pitch violation called on him. Um, Nick Castellanos did. And he wasn't happy about it. And he gets back in the box, and he steps out of the box to give the guy some grief. And he threw an F-bomb at the guy. And he said, I've been in this league for 10 years. How about I, you give me some F and respect and uh, let me hear your voice? And like, if I was the umpire, and the umpire's going, it was, a, it was a pitch clock violation. What do we do? And, and so if, if, I, if I was uh, the umpire, and because uh, I would have been a smart ass in that situation, and the umpire, I think, held his... Because, you know, he, I mean, he could have got thrown out of the game for doing that. But what the umpire said, what should have said, or what I would have said is, uh, okay, 10 years, uh, get back in the box, 213. That, that's, that's what I would have said. That's what I would have said. Nick Castellanos would have straightened him out right away. Right? Like, wait, you're hitting 213? You're going to bitch at me for a pitch clock violation that was your fault? Come on, dude. All right. Anyway. Don't worry about the Phillies losing a game. It's not a big deal. Uh, I don't think it's jet lag. I just think it's one of those games where you're just not focused. And in baseball, if you're not focused, things like that happen. And the game gets away from you. It's not a big deal. Like I said, the Phillies bore me. And not in a bad way. They bore me in a good way. Because they're a really good team. And, and if I project... Who are the two best teams in the National League? There's two of them. One of the Phillies, one's the Dodgers. And, and hopefully, that at the end of the season, they will be the two teams that face off against each other. Now, now, I don't know about the American League. Are the Yankees better than the Dodgers? I mean, who knows at this point? But those are the three teams right now that are, that are getting most of the attention, and justifiably so, because um, you, you can't make a case for any other team Really, that is as good as the Phillies at this point in the National League. It's not the Braves. They are falling off the cliff without Acuna. Uh, it, it, I mean, what in the other division? I mean, is it the Milwaukee Brewers? Is Chicago Cubs? I mean, seriously, it's not. There's really nobody. So let's just relax and like, enjoy a baseball season. If they lose, they lose. There's no sense for panic. JT, uh, the absent JT, not going to hurt them that much. Because of the factors that I mentioned, they're going to get two guys back, including Trey Turner, and uh, the pitching staff's not going to let them go on an extended losing streak. And that's comfortable as a fan when you know your team can't possibly blow it. Like, suppose you were the Mets. The Mets are a team that can go on a, a losing streak because they stink, and it's demoralizing to a fan base. We are lucky as a Philadelphia sports fan base for what the Phillies present to you every night. Darren, your thoughts. Yeah, it was jet lag. That's number one. This team is deep. <laughs> That's a jet, jet lag. That's a typical sports radio. Like, I can see it's sports radio. I, I think it was the, the, the London trip finally caught up with them. They were terrible. It's like, dude, it was. it's a 160 it was game happen. schedule. You're going to lose the game and you're going to look bad it's, in a certain it's game. It's physics. It's science. Jet lag. It catches up with you. I, I, look, this team is deep. I don't worry about this team. The pitching, and I have to say this, and you never do, but please, you have to start saying this for my own so I can sleep at night. Barring injury to the pitching, they will be fine. They have the best rotation in baseball. Uh, Sanchez lost a little bit last night. That's okay. He, and he's a good, he's a strong four. He might be the best five in baseball, but he's a strong four. They're, they're top three on most nights are nearly unhittable this season. That's incredible. Um, Marshan is not a prospect. I never thought I, I watched that game last night and I thought really was Stubbs was playing. <laughs> the first time I ever thought I would first time I ever thought that and probably the only time I'll ever think that they're so deep. Dahl out of nowhere. I mean, this, and, and we forget he was the number one pick overall. He was an all star in 2019. He just hasn't been healthy. But they have depth on this team. Dombrowski's built a pretty deep roster. I'm not worried. Uh, I do think they're going to go out and get another bat before the trade deadline, though. Well, in that case, Dahl will be back in AAA. He's not long for this. He's not going to stay on this team. No, I, I don't think so. By the way, with Turner and Marsh coming up, you, you're going to do a little gloating because you and I both know who's going down. Who? Your boy. The who's one you, boy? you're going to say you were right about all along. Johan Rojas is going to go down to AAA. He's not he's going He's not anywhere. hitting. 
and his defense is like going backwards. Wait, 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 on what planet do you think that now they're going to send Rohan Rojas down? I just have a feeling. Of tr- they, they, they were, who are you I, I put down? Story where they like Marsh better as a left fielder. So who's going to play center field? They're, Rojas isn't going anywhere. Okay, who's going down? I, I don't know. It's not, we're, they, they may move Pache to trade or DFA him, but they're not okay. going to demote Johan Rojas but they've got to do that. He's hitting 231. That's fine for them. I, I, I'm, I have a feeling that he's going to go down to AAA. He's not. All right. I'll tell you what. I will bet you a saw buck right now that Rojas doesn't go down. Okay. All right. All right. What's, that? What's a saw buck? Mr. Why would, oh, man, what's why that? Five they, hours? Why would they do that with him? Listen. I don't know who you send to... down right now. That's my, that's well, my point. You don't send Rojas down. You're going to get one center you fielder. You can't send Pache down unless you move him. Because he's going to get Pache, claimed. Uh, He'll get claimed. Listen, JT's on. They don't have to send anybody down, really. JT on a DL. They got an extra spot they, now. Well, they do, but they don't. You got to have Marshan up. You have to have two catchers. <laughs> there's, there's no way that Rojas is going. I, look, no. I thought you'd be all over that because you, you can't wait to, you can't wait to wave that flag. No, <laughs> I know how the Phillies. I the Phillies. Don't have any desire to send him down. They they don't Maybe think not. he's struggling enough to send him down. He's hitting two thirty. Right. That's fine for them. I you know what? They're, You're they're, probably they right. I just don't, don't know who else him. you put down at this point. But they don't. They're not going to send him down. He's not the guy they're sending down at this point. All right. It's June now. They're going to send him down now. Right. They're not going to send him down. All right. Uh, first of all, you you should have been banned from having any baseball opinion at all once you put the. The Phillies were jet, jet lag because it happens. It's yeah. science. Yeah, you should have. You should have been. I should have really hooked you, and 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 turn put your mute button on after Dude, that. So Phil, your, baseball your, your, your writers baseball opinions, get jet lag, let alone the you, athletes. You've already told me uh, uh, the Phillies were jet lagged. That's why I lost in Boston, and they're sending Rojas down. Two two of the most erroneous <laughs> points that anybody can make. I mean, I'm I'm back on Sports Talk Radio. Some idiot who thinks he knows baseball is calling in. All right. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move All on. Right, um, this, I'm going to call this segment the wide world of sports because we're just, you know, we're going to span the globe, as they used to say on the wild world of sports with Jim McKay's voice booming out. Um, nothing really substantial that you can sink your teeth into, but a bunch of varied topics that we should go over. Number one is the NBA Finals. Which is uh, all uh, over, but the shell. The only thing you could think of: the Dallas Mavericks have enough left, and with the Boston Celtics, w- would they rather win it at home in Game Five? But I think the Dallas is dead now, and I think it'll be a sweep, and, and Boston will win. Um, uh, interesting last night. I, you know, I've been saying for for a long time that uh, the Mavericks just don't have enough scoring to deal with Boston, um, and, and in a situation where Boston's so smart. They they hunt down Luca defensively, and uh, because they know he can't guard, and, and he's not a willing guarder because he he's the guy that has, saves his en- a lot of his energy just to play on the offensive end. Uh, he had been playing decent defense in in the playoffs to this point, but obviously they they are hunting him down and get him in situations where he has to guard somebody, and he can't do it. Conversely, the Boston Celtics are so well ver they they dare you to double, which Dallas does every now and then they scramble around and, and they, they move the ball so, so good that anybody's got an open shot. I, I mean, this is a team where five guys on the floor at any single time can kill you. And, and that's what they've been doing. And, and Tatum and Brown are playing at a high level. Like poor, they don't even need Porzingis to close the series out. And he probably won't play the rest of the series. Uh, Boston wins it in uh, four uh, or five games. Now um, I don't, I don't know. Listen, I, <laughs> I don't know what credence people give to a guy like Brian Windhorst. Uh, I don't consider him a X and O basketball expert, and I don't consider him uh, a foremost NBA analyst that I must hear from, uh, because basically he got into the business by he was a small town newspaper guy who covered LeBron in high school, and then the LeBron phenomenon, and he. He was on the inside of LeBron, and that's how he made his career. And you know, he's made a good career for himself. I, I don't begrudge him a good career. Uh, but uh, like, if this criticism came from an ex-player uh, or, or uh, you know, a player analyst, then I would give him a little more credence to it. But let's hear Brian Windhorst rip into uh, to Luka Doncic 
for his lack uh, of performance uh, in these playoffs, especially last night. Luca and Kyrie combined for actually more than Tate Brown did, but Luca fouls out late. I just wonder your reaction to that whole sequence. Yeah, um, I thought it was perfect that Luca fell onto the ground there in an unacceptable position to put himself in with four minutes left with five fouls, and then immediately looks at the bench and says, you better bleeping challenge it, as if it's the bench's fault that he just made a terrible play. I'm standing here in the Mavericks tunnel. Over there is the Celtics tunnel. That's where the winners are. If Luca's ever going to be a winner coming out of this tunnel here, he is going to have to use this. Have what's happened in this finals as a learning experience. His defensive performance is unacceptable. He is a hole on the court. The Celtics are attacking him. They are ahead in this series because they have attacked him defensively. And you've got a situation here where Luca is complaining about the officiating. They have begged him. They have talked with him. They have pleaded with him. He is costing his team because of how he treats the officials. He's a brilliant player. He does so many things well. They are here because of how he did. His performance in this game is unacceptable and the reason why the Mavericks are not going to win. He's got to get over this. And the fact that he came out after the game and blamed the officials showed me he's nowhere close yet. So maybe over the summer, somebody will get to him because nobody with the Mavericks or anybody else in his life has. And that's where the Mavericks are at this point. They're never going to get to this tunnel with the trophy if he doesn't improve those aspects of his game. Brian Wenhorst, uh, I'll leave it right there. I appreciate your time, and uh, hopefully we'll talk again this series. You think we get to a Game 5 Monday or no? I'm very interested to see what Luka does on Friday. The, ban the 18th banner is coming to Boston. The duck boats are getting loaded up one at some point. I want to see how Luca reacts because he owes his team a better performance in game four. Ryan Windhorst, thank you so much. All right, that is Wendy giving you the scoop on Luca. Kind of buried him there. Now, I was, I was just with a, I was playing golf today with a guy um, who's an ex NBA official. I won't identify him. Uh, but uh, Tim Donaghy? <laughs> No, no, uh, no. And, and, and Luca is. Uh, let's, let's face it. He is a stone baby brat. And uh, the guy was telling me, well, you know why he's like that? Because he never, he never got his ass kicked on a schoolyard. When you act like that on a schoolyard, somebody kicks your ass. And uh, he never did because he he became a pro when he was thirteen. So he never really had the hard scrabble. Uh, uh, five on five full court uh, where it's heated and the whole bit and uh, and he's a pain in the ass he, he really is and last night he was such a baby whining about fouls that he cost his team like two buckets uh, you know he, he falls down and he's yelling at the official you know the guy's a great talent uh, but there's something that has to be done with this guy and i don't know who can do it i don't think his teammates uh are big enough to send that message i know that coaches aren't anymore. Uh, I, I know Jason Kidd tr tried to say he's yeah he's going to have to. They're they're hunting him down. He's going to have to defend. But the thing about the NBA, if you're a great player, you can do anything you want. And it doesn't matter what it, no, a coach can't even tell you that you got to buck, buckle down because once that guy, coach does that, then you lose the player, and the player goes, uh, I, I move on with the coach. The NBA players have all the power. There is not a coach in the league anymore that has the power. Now, you can look at Popovich or you can look at, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, the guy in Miami. You know, very few coaches have the ability to, to really steer their players. If a player bails on you, you are done. Now, let's look at the situation in Cleveland, J.B. Bickerstaff. Just to, they, well, he did a pretty good job with that team. They got into the playoffs. All of a sudden, they looked like they were on the rise. The star player doesn't like him. Sayonara. See you later. And this is what the NBA has created. They have created monsters out of their star players. Look what happened with the Lakers. You know, Darvin Ham didn't do that bad of a job. Once he doesn't have the support of his two stars, what has to happen? You're compelled to make a change. Now, if you think J.J. Redick is going to take that job and have uh, some kind of, and hold some kind of sway over star players, you're absolutely crazy. The NBA has become a league that ha is is really just a monster run by stars, and nobody has the ability to coach to the extent where you can coach discipline. You have to get the right players that that, that fit that buy in. And how many times really does that happen? It is very rare when that happens. Now, it's happened in Boston this year. It happened in Denver the year before. 
But once a star player bails on you, you are done. And you can look at any other league. You could sustain that kind of a blow. But when a star player on a five-man team does that, you are cooked. And so that's the bottom line for that. Um, all right, uh, let's move on. Uh, Jerry West, speaking of the NBA, uh, passed. And uh, it's a shock to, to the basketball world. Jerry West considered one of the NBA's great players ever. And so for, for um, I, I like to do this. When I go, okay, how great of a player was he? And I like, like to rank the players. Now, I don't put centers in my ranking. These are just players that I believe have more of an all-around game. Centers are uh, a, spe- a specified category. Like, I can never put Wilt or Russell in a, in a list of all-time great players, or, or Kareem for that matter. They just play a different game. So what I'm talking about is, the, is the, the people that are not centers that have to play more of the court and have to show more versatility, offensively especially, uh, than a center does. So I keep a separate list of centers, and then I, I have other players. So Jerry West belongs on the other player list. And uh, so without centers, this is how I rank it. And Darren, you can give me uh, feedback if, if you like, and we'll go down one at a time and see if you agree with me or not. Okay. Here's my ranking system, my non-center ranking system, and then we'll see where Jerry West belongs on this. So let's go first with Jordan. Yes. LeBron. Yes. You said that reluctantly. I'm Are you so serious? partial to Kobe, but yes. Are you serious? No, I said yes. I said yes, God damn it. Go on. Yeah, but it, but it took you a long time to say that. <laughs> I'm partial to Kobe. This, this, this Go is an Kobe example three, yes. Of what LeBron does to people. LeBron is a polarizing guy. For some people, they just can't they can't get to the point where they go, well, he's the second best player of all time, and he may be the first. Because he's not the first. because people hate LeBron. People hate he's him. Not the and first. I, I just I just dimed you out as a LeBron <laughs> hater with that pause. All right. Number three. Kobe, yes. Kobe. Yes. Magic four. Yes. Bird, yes. Tim Duncan, and I'm stretching it because he was more of a forward than a center. He could go on the center list, but I'm going Tim Duncan after Bird. You're stretching because I don't know many people to think of him as a forward. But okay. Well, he played forward a lot with the Admiral years. He was a forward. True. That's a a smaller portion of his career, though. Yeah, the Admiral played how many years with Duncan? Uh, less than years. Duncan played without him. Okay. All right. Well, you can put parentheses okay. around that. And you, if you want to take him off, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Oscar Robertson. You know, I, I had lunch with Oscar Robertson once. Me, Sonny Hill, and Oscar with. Robertson. That's a true story. Really? What were you doing? Some kind of video? I thing was with? producing. I don't. I didn't work when I was at WIP. I was your producer, but I. Oh, I, you were producing the Sunny Hill I, show. Well, I got asked to. Somebody called out. Somebody can you come in Sunday morning and produce. Uh, you know, a couple shows. It was Peter Lacabeza Grande, and then it was, uh, <laughs> and then it was Sunny, and and we had Oscar on the show, and he's like, yeah, hey, yeah, we were talking about going to lunch, and. It was right after the show, and Sonny says, you want to come to lunch with me and, and Big O? And I yeah, said, uh, okay. Back in the days, you mentioned, you mentioned the guy. What was that guy's name, Peter Hill? Peter La Cabeza Grande, we used to call him. Yeah, I used to call him La Cabeza Grande because yeah. he had a big head, yeah. which means it's a big head in Spanish. But what, what was his Peter real last name? Solomon. Peter Solomon, that's right. <laughs> WIP, they used to do these shows where they, they had, you had to vote certain Certain amount of hours to uh, do uh, like like local uh, political stuff bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 that, uh, he was a very strange man. But then Sonny <laughs> Hill would come on after him. If you remember the golden days, I called it Peter like a basic Oh man. Uh, okay, uh, that's great. All right, after Oscar, uh, Kevin Durant. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm okay with that. You're getting into an area where I'm not the. You're getting into the area where I'm not the expert to say you're right or wrong. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a. Like basketball is not. First of all, that name, that name should come automatically to your. Head. I know who Kevin Durant is. I'm just wondering okay. who. Well, I know exactly he, who he. I know that, exactly who Kevin Durant he's is. He's that kind of status player. My so, point is, I don't um, know if he's and, right. And in after game. KD, I have Jerry West. So okay. if you're not including Duncan. It's Jordan, Le- Kobe, LeBron, Kobe, Magic, Bird, Oscar, KD, and Jerry West. That's my list. So that makes Jerry West eighth on the all-time list. There you go. Uh, here's an example of a guy 
who can do anything he wants. We just talked about NBA players can do anything they want. Aaron Rodgers has that status of a guy who could do anything he wants. Now, he's a total wackadoo. And uh, uh, if you're a fan of the Jets, you roll your eyes at this guy. Like, we, we roll our eyes at Donovan McNabb. Aaron Rodgers is Donovan McNabb times 25 as far as weirdness go. So he's, he missed the Jets minicamp, and um, the head coach, Robert Sala, said it was an unexcused absence, and they had a double back on it. Nobody knows where he is. He might be in another retreat. Uh, he, you know, who, who knows he what, where Aaron Rodgers is? He might be prepping for RFK is. Jr.'s campaign. He, he might be know. doing that. He, he might be in a political. Who knows? But he decided to blow off minicamp, and they don't even know where he is. That's a guy who knows that he can get away with it. Like, look at it. I go, would I blame If I was Aaron Rodgers and I want to go to minicamp, would I care? And I go, probably not. They set him up to be the, the, the messiah for the whole franchise. So he's going, what responsibility do I have to go to minicamp? I don't want to go to minicamp. I, I, I'm a, a, a star player in this league. I'm a veteran. They need me more than anything else. I can do anything I want. That's the classic example of what these kind of athletes can do to a team. It's changed. The whole landscape has changed. Now, there are not many that have his status. And I don't even know if he, he has the status anymore, to be honest I hate, with you. I hate that we're but talking in his about mind, it. In his mind, he's got the status. He can do anything he wants. And he decided, I'm not going to go to minicamp, and there's nothing you can do about it. And he's right. This is a non... <laughs> the whole thing about this is you know, we can sit here in, in, in anguish and, and, and uh, resentment for today's uh, brat sports uh, uh, stars. <laughs> But the bottom line is, he's got all the power. And he, I and, can't and, oh, God, to you. And, <laughs> this is a non Darren sanctioned subject to talk about. I don't want to talk about it. I can't stand this guy. I don't, he, I, first of all, his best days are so far behind him on the field. We don't know that. Yes, he they missed are. all last year. We don't, we don't know if his best days I are behind do. him. They're, really? Yes. Were the best days behind Tom Brady? Where, oh, we're going to compare him to Tom Brady now. No, I'm saying you could have made the same case for Tom Brady. He, his best days weren't behind him. But at what point? Yeah. What? At what point in his career are you talking about, Brady? When he went to the box. I mean, when he, he went to the box, everybody thought his career was behind him. And it turned out he wasn't. So you can't say that about Aaron Rodgers. My point is whether it is or not, or is or not, his teammates can't even say anything to him. Like his teammates can't get, even get upset because they go, Oh, he's the man. You know, we, if he, if we don't have him, we're we're crap. It's like um, it's an amazing situation in, in pro sports anymore, where certain people just have all the power. It doesn't belong to the organization anymore. It doesn't belong to the owner, the general manager, the head coach. It belongs to the star player. Uh, that stuff's going to get all quick, though, Mike, with his teammates, right? Is he going to wear thin? Don't you think? <laughs> No, it may wear thin if they if they if he can't play anymore. But if he can play, they they wouldn't care what he does. Oh, well, they he don't know. It. He's never there. How do they know if he can play? <laughs> he doesn't feel a guy like Aaron Rodgers doesn't feel the responsibility of being a teammate anymore. He has been set up as a, 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 a he's the bigger than a teammate. He's like he can do anything he wants. The Jets. How much did they spend to get that guy? He's supposed to be the savior of a, a, a woe-be-gone franchise. He knows it. They know it. The team knows it. The players know it. And, and he can go, he can go, yeah, I'll tell you what. T tomorrow, I'm just going to show up in a Hawaiian shirt and wave to you from the street. And you can't do any. You can't do anything about it. <laughs> All right. The U.S. The US Open <sighs> is going on right now. Uh, and I have some odds for you. Uh, obviously, the betting favorite. These are the Bet Rivers odds. Uh, and the betting favorite is none other than uh, Scotty uh, Scheffler. Uh, so uh, let's look at, at some of the odds. Now, Rory McIlroy's odds have just changed. He must be having a good day as we're doing this podcast. We're not watching the Open. But Rory is at plus 400 right now. And he leads the odds. Uh, Scheffler is plus 450. Ludwig uh, Oberg is plus 550. Had a good day. And Patrick Cantlay came out of the gate at five under at Pinehurst, Pinehurst number two, a really tough course. He's plus 750. DeChambeau is plus 1,000. Xander Shoffley plus 1,200. Kepka at plus 1,800. Colin Morikawa also plus 1,800. And then we get Tony Finau at plus 2,200. 
and then it falls off. Tommy Fleetwood, Corey Connors, uh, Terrell Hatton, uh, and then like my dark horse is at plus five thousand, and that's uh, Cameron Smith. Now I I don't know what he shot today. Maybe he's plus five thousand because he didn't get out of the gate very well. But uh, but uh, if I was going to play a top five finish right now, I would select Cameron Smith. But the Bet Rivers app has all kinds of odds. Think about that. You can you can you can play a golfer against golfer. Like they'll have it set up where they you know, force them with golfers, and uh, uh, they gave you two golfers and set odds for who's going to have the better day, which is a lot of fun when you're you're playing the odds. All right, that'll do it for the Mike Missanelli podcast. Thanks for listening. We're a little long today, but you know we were. We got all uh, bounced into a lot of subject today. We appreciate you uh, listening. You know, uh, tell your friends and neighbors that the Mike Miscelli podcast. All you got to do is Google my name, Mike Miscelli podcast. It'll pop up. You subscribe on any podcast network, uh, uh, Apple iTunes, uh, uh, Spotify, uh, Google, Amazon, whatever. Uh, tell your friends it's free and we'll come to your inbox every Tuesday and Thursday normally. Have a great rest of the day. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hot, hot, hot coming up, so uh, stay cool. Uh, I think I'm going to play golf tomorrow. Let me just to tell you a little something about my golf game right now. Um, it stinks, okay? And I keep going. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm playing baseball and golf. Like, I played a baseball game yesterday, came back and played golf today. I'm going to play golf again tomorrow and a baseball game on Sunday. It's too much, and that's why it's affecting my golf game. I, I literally am horrible right now, and I can't stand myself. All right. Well, oh, one other little. I don't understand why you have back and hip problems. You keep playing all this baseball and golf. I don't yeah, understand. That's, that's I don't the problem. get it. That's the problem. Back and hip problems, and you know, and it's not conducive to playing well. <laughs> uh, one other thing that uh, people have been asking me about uh, on Twitter uh, yesterday: my old station fired their general manager. This was the same general manager that decided not to renew my contract two years ago, almost to the day. Uh, he's gone. I don't know what's going to happen at that station. I will tell you this, however. That station, in the last couple of months, has made me an offer. Um, I can't tell you much more about that because if the offer was satisfactory to me, I probably would be on the radio. But at this point, it is not. So with new management coming in, I have no idea what will happen here. I just want to say this. I am committed to this podcast, and I'm going to do this podcast for a really long period of time. And uh, the other stuff really doesn't matter to me. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I'm good, because I like spending time with you here on the podcast. For Darren, I am Mike Missinelli. Have a great rest of the day, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. 